Okay, let's talk about finding the lowest common denominator when you have uh, fractions that involve variables. And uh, technically, in algebra, when we have fractions that involve variables, we call these guys rational expressions, okay? Uh, just in case you didn't know, a number like 3 over 7 is, in fact, a fraction, okay? You, should, you would describe it as such, but this is really a rational number, a rational number. So we're kind of um, up in our uh, game, if you will, our understanding of working with fractions. And of course, a big part of working with fractions is understanding how to determine the LCD. Um, so before I get into all of this, first let me introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over many, many years, I've constructed a ton of online math courses. These are super high quality, fully comprehensive uh, math courses at the middle and high school math level. So if you need uh, a math course, okay, if you're looking to take one online or you need a um, program to help you with your current math course, I'm going to leave a link to my um, program in the description of this video. Um, that's my full instruction. Uh, I probably have, you know, I, you know, I'm just I'm not exaggerating, but I probably have the most videos of any program that I know of online. It's taken me well over a decade to build out all my content on here, and I've done it uh, to make sure you get everything you possibly could need at these uh, various math uh, levels. Okay, there's a lot that goes into not just doing it like for, I'm going to do a quick tutorial video here but if you really want to master math you need complete full instruction and a ton of uh, example problems that are being solved um, so also um, I'm going to leave a link to uh, various math notes that you might be interested in uh, pre-algebra algebra one uh, algebra two trigonometry and geometry and this LCD stuff here um, is generally taught kind of really get into it at the algebra one level uh, so it's kind of introduced at the pre-algebra level. So if you um, don't have a good pair of notes on this and you want a good pair of notes, uh, you know where to find those as well. Okay, so let's get into finding the LCD, the lowest common denominator for a problem like this. So here we have a, um, a fraction, right? A variable fraction. We call these rational expressions. And we want to add them up. This would be no different than, say, taking this fraction, 3 tenths plus one fifteenth okay and i'm going to add these two fractions up by the way i just did a video on how to find the lcd uh with fractions where the lowest common denominators were uh, only uh, numbers so if you don't know how to uh, find the uh, lcd um where the denominators are only numbers okay then you want to review that. Uh, I really should uh, link it to this here video, but if you if you go into my playlist, you'll you'll find it um, in the pre-algebra playlist or somewhere on my channel uh, if you want to learn this. But you got to know how to do this first. Okay. Now here, you know, finding the LCD of uh, 10 and 15. Let's just review that real quick. Okay. Uh, you should already know how to do this. You should be an expert. Uh, in it, but what we're going to do is what? This is 5 times 2, that's the factors of 10, and this is 5 times 3, so we need, these are the prime factors, we're going to need a 5, and then we're also going to need a 2 and a 3, so that's 2 and a 3, and we multiply all these together, that's 10 times 3, it's 30, okay, so the LCD uh, here, okay, in this particular problem with 10 and 15 as our denominator, is 30 and we were able to do that because we looked at the prime factors and we selected each one of or we needed each one of these prime factors represented in a product okay so five uh, is a prime factor two and three so all these are the unique prime factors in the denominator and we multiply them together we get our lcd okay so that's how you find uh, the lcd technically now most of you would you know, way back in the good old days and, you know, sixth grade, fifth grade, you'd be like, oh, yeah, what's the lowest number? You could just look at this problem, kind of figure it out. Like, oh, yeah, 30, uh, 10 goes into 30, 15 goes into 30. And that's fine, you know, to do that. But when you have larger values, you need a more, you know, technical procedure to find the LCD. And this is what it is. Okay, so you got to, you know, hopefully understand that and strengthen your understanding 
of working with the LCD when it comes just to, to arithmetic, okay? But what was the key here? The key was factoring, all right? And I stress this in many of my uh, other videos is that what you learn in arithmetic carries over to algebra, okay? So again, when we look at a problem like this, <clears throat> excuse me, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to add two fractions, okay? So I can't add these two fractions unless the denominators are the same, okay? So I need to rewrite these fractions, and uh, in order to do that, I need the lowest common denominator, right? Now, I'm not going to get into how to uh, to complete a, the, pool, uh, the full problem, okay? Because that's kind of distract away. I'll do other videos on that. Right now, I just want to keep the focus on finding the LCD because this is a, uh, a place where a lot of students um, get confused. So let's just focus on the LCD. Again, if you need more math help uh, with this topic for adding or subtracting rational expressions, you know where to find that, and I'll do more future videos on it. That's why you want, definitely want to subscribe to my channel. All right, so let's get to this problem. So we have four over two x squared plus x plus uh, one, uh, I think we had an x here. Yeah, one over three x, okay. So here is our problem. So what are the skills that we're gonna need here to uh, solve or find the LCD, okay? Well, just like over here, you know, I factor 10 and I factor 15. You need to know how to factor. You need to know how to factor. So in algebra, I stress this big time in all my courses, but factoring is a critical skill. If you can't factor, you're not going to be able to add, subtract, uh, rational expressions. Just you're not going to be able to do a ton of things. So you got to make sure you have good factoring skills. If your factoring skills are weak, then that's a whole separate topic. Okay, and that's a pretty big um, discussion discussion in and of itself. But let's go ahead and see if you can factor. If you want to kind of follow along in this video, I would pause the video and factor. Factor this expression, and then just think about what are, what the factors of this expression is right here. Okay, all right. So uh, this expression, this right here, this denominator, I can factor out an x. So this would be x times what? That would be two x plus one. So if you got that right, that's excellent. And then this is basically uh, just three x. Okay, that's the factors three and x. Okay, so now let's follow kind of the pattern of what we did over here. Okay, so once we had everything factored, each unique um, uh, factor had to be represented, each unique prime factor had to be represented in a product for our LCD, okay? So let's go ahead and build out the LCD here, LCD. So what is the LCD? Okay, so I have X, okay, I have an X as a factor, Okay, this is this these two things are factors, okay? Okay, this is two factors. This is x, and then this whole thing here is a factor, okay? Three is a factor and x is a factor, right? So you gotta make sure you understand that. So let's take a look at this first factor, x. Okay. All right, I have an x here, so that's gonna have to be in my L C D. And I have this other x. It, all I need to do is represent one power of of uh, the uh, the factor, okay? So I have an X here, an X here. I just need to represent it one time in my LCD, okay? Then I have this 2X plus 1, all right? I'm going to have to have that in my LCD because that's a unique factor. And then I have to have my uh, 3 in my LCD as well, okay? So what I can do now is just multiply all this stuff together. So let's do it this way, 3 times X, that's 3x, and then we can multiply by 2x plus 1. And when I multiply, this could be 6x squared plus 3x. That would be my lowest common denominator. Now, here's a bit of a tip for you, okay? When you're actually doing problems involving LCD with variable expression, these rational expressions, leave your LCD uh, factor, okay? Don't multiply back in. Okay, uh, unless you're kind of told to do so, or if you think that the final version of your answer requires you to do that. Okay, just leave things factored because that's what's going to uh, benefit you. Okay, all right, so that's a quick uh, example. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, and I can come up with a lot of different type of um, variations of this. Okay, we can be, I don't want to make this video too long, so I may not cover every single kind of uh 
variation of, of factoring and whatnot for you to get really, really good at this. Okay, this is just a kind of a quick tutorial to kind of, if you were totally lost in it, to get you on the right path. So you want to practice this stuff, you know, either obviously with whatever material you're learning at school or, you know, follow on instruction in maybe some of my other YouTube videos or definitely in my uh, full math learning program. Okay, because this is a fairly involved um, uh, topic. Okay, so we're just kind of, you know, doing an overview of this. All right, so here we go. Again, look here, I'm subtracting two variable fractions, two rational expressions. Remember the LCD is relevant to when you're adding or subtracting fractions, not when you're multiplying or dividing, okay? So when I'm looking at what's going on here, if I had this, okay, don't get confused, we don't need to deal with the LCD, okay? But if I have this, I'm going to have to deal with the LCD. So I'm looking at the denominators. And I'm like, okay, what's the first thing I need to do? All right. So if I want the LCD, the first thing you need to do is got to completely factor each respective denominator. Okay. So again, it comes back to your factoring ability. And uh, go ahead and pause the video if you want to go ahead and, and uh, see how strong you are in factoring, can you factor this, uh, these denominators? Okay, so x squared minus nine happens to uh, factor, uh, let's just do it this way, as x plus three times x minus three. This is what we call the difference of two squares. So you gotta know how to do that, right? So if you didn't know that this was equal to this, then you can't do this problem, okay? And then x plus three is, um, is just uh, x plus three, that's its only factor one in that. So here is our factors, okay? So we have this factor, this is a factor, this is another factor of this, okay? And this is another factor. Okay, so can you tell me what the LCD is? Okay, what is the LCD? All right, so let's go through this. Again, we're gonna have to um, have each factor represented. So I have an x plus three and x plus three and x minus three. So I'm definitely going to have to have an x plus 3 in my LCD. So it's represented here, and it's represented over there, okay? So at this point, I'm like, well, do I have to write this twice? No, you only have to write the factor once, okay? As long as this, the factor is represented one time is uh, fine. And then I have this x minus 3 that's also got to be in my LCD, and that's it. This is the LCD of this uh, rational expression. Okay. Now let's kind of mess around with, uh, some things here for a second. Let's say I had this scenario. Okay. Let's say I had, um, X plus three cubed and I had this X plus three right here. Okay. So let's say this was my problem. Okay. So what would be the LCD here? Okay, do you think you know what it is? So this is a different type of problem, right? So x plus 3 cubed is the same thing as x plus 3 times x plus 3 times x plus 3, right? So we wouldn't write it that way. We would write it as x plus 3 cubed. So we look at these factors. I got, well, I got x plus 3 here, and I got x plus 3 here. So maybe I just need to just write x plus 3. It's fine. I mean, there's 3 over here with this 1 here. I just need to have it represented. That's not the case, okay? This is x plus 3 to the first power. There's only one of these. This is x plus 3 to the third power, okay? The rule, uh, when you're finding the LCD, okay, of uh, uh, these rational expressions is we have to take the highest power. Now, this goes to, again, how to uh, find the LCD of numbers. There's a, a video I did not too long ago, um, and only in a, I guess a lot of people are struggling this because... Within a couple of weeks, that video has already had like close to 100,000 views. So <laughs> I'm like, wow, that was that really took off. Okay, but that's good. I'm glad that people are like getting back to the basics, right? We got to understand the basics here. So we have x plus three to the first power. We have x plus three to the third power. The rule is we have to use the highest power, okay, for our LCD. So the highest power of x plus three. I have x plus three to the first. We have x plus three to the third. We got to use the highest power for our LCD, and then we just look at all the other factors, and we use the same kind of rule of thumb. Okay. Oh, I got an x minus three. That's got to be in my LCD, and there is my LCD. 
Okay, so now what we do with the LCD, there's a lot that uh, you do with the LCD of rational expressions, okay? Um, obviously, we add and subtract rational expressions, but we also solve rational equations. We need the LCD. The bottom line is uh, you need to understand how to find the LCD of just numeric fractions, okay? Uh, one. Two, you got to know how to factor. You got to be a factoring expert, okay? So go back and review, you know, all the things you've learned about uh, factoring. The third thing is once you got all that down, you got to practice how to find the LCD of these rational expressions. Just get the correct LCD. Once you have the correct LCD, then we can go ahead and actually, you know, uh, start subtracting and adding and solving rational um, equations, etc. And that's a whole nother topic. But again, a lot of students um, uh, you know, struggle with this because they, they get confused on the LCD. And that's why this video was dedicated to you and the LCD of these rational expressions. Okay, so if you understand, uh, you know, more about this, that's excellent. But just, you know, be mindful that watching this video and learning for me real quick is not enough. That's like, okay, yeah, you, you, you kind of get it, but it's not going to stick and you're not going to really learn it unless you practice. You got to do practice problems. And if you want to see more demonstrated, you know, solved problems, that's where you want to want to check out my math help program because I do like a ton of, you know, uh, ex like homework problems, if you will, you know, like a, a lot <laughs> fully explained step-by-step um, everything like that. But I also have a few more examples, I'm pretty sure, on my YouTube channel. I lose track because I do. I have hundreds and hundreds of, of videos on my um, channel, but I'm pretty certain that I have some more examples there. But um, hey, if you like this video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And let me some feedback. How's your um, math uh, going? Is this particular topic been struggling? You know, have you been struggling with it? You know, did this video help you out? Uh, any feedback would be uh, good feedback. And again, you know, you got to practice this stuff and make sure you have good notes, right? That's my last little tip for today. And so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.